statement and that time may end. My topic is the end justifies the means. My position is affirmative and I support it. I believe the end result was worth doing in order to make that thing happen. As Mark Whitney once said, sometimes you have to sacrifice a few for the good of many. He's saying that you have to sometimes sacrifice some people for the greater good of a lot of people. My first point is that you'll always find something good in the end. An example of that would be at home when you update your electronic device. The time it takes to update may cause some of your precious time to get wasted, but after it's done updating, the electronic device becomes more fast, reliable, and more secure. And there, another example would be when doing homework after coming back from school. Homework is sometimes boring and stressful, but after you're done, you feel proud and contented that I'm completing it now, and now I'm doing the material even better than before. The end is worth it because you get that feeling of satisfaction when you finish it. My second point is that the in is that the end will benefit the majority of people. One example would be during the Industrial Revolution. Lives were lost and people were injured while working in the factories, but a lot of new technology was made, including steel production, the light bulb, refrigeration, the telegraph, and the transatlantic cable. In the year 18,000, steam engines with 10,000 horsepower were made. By 1850, stationary engines had 500,000 horsepower and mobile engines had 790,000 horsepower. From the increase of horsepower and steam engines, they were able to haul more load in a small amount of time, making steam engines a more fast and reliable method of transportation. During this time, accidents happened and workers got injured or died. At the same time, the Industrial Revolution created many new products and technologies and improved existing parts. The end result of the Industrial Revolution was better new technology that has made our lives so much easier. But my third and final point where the end justifies the means is imperialism. The British took the Indians' wealth away and kept them as slaves, but they introduced India to many new things, including education, government, um, con um, the constitution, law, and law and order. They also improved India's methods of communication, irrigation, and road slash railways. Before the British came, India was divided into many smaller kingdoms, ruled by regional kings, and they were much of the help to the commons. Though it might seem that the British ruled India for a long time, it led to the development of many new things which proved beneficial in the long run. My opponent may argue that the end is not always good because the end is only good for some and bad for the others, but I counter by saying we'll always find something good in the end. They might say humans are unique and every life matters, or to sac if sac sacrificing the lives of some lead to the better of the others, then it's worth it. Though it might not seem at first that all of this is good, all of this is good, but as it progresses, you realize the end is better than what it was before. Thank you. I now stand ready for cross examination. so much progress going on that um, the really education was much of a focus. It's, yeah, it wasn't a focus and I'm saying that's a bad thing and that we might be at a more advanced place today. Even though the Industrial Revolution did indeed create more um, innovations, maybe we would have had m many more innovations if that whole generation was entitled with education. But we needed workers to work in the factory so that whatever technology was being made, it it could be made. Yes, but technology doesn't, I mean, it can be produced without, I don't know, it doesn't need to be produced that quickly. I think as long as you're innovating, it's okay. So do you agree that life has value? Yes. Can you quantify how much a life is worth? Well, life is worth, I guess, everything. Okay. Then how can you say that killing killing, even to save a greater amount of lives, is justified, given that there's no standard to how much a particular person is worth. But if killing those lives would benefit so many people, then it's worth it, because if you look in the bigger picture, that's the few people are like a small amount to like the amount of people we have right now living in this country. Well, in this world. There's so Hi. many examples. Alright, well you may have three minutes for your cross-examination. <laughs> 
or I mean statement, I apologize. Um, and that time begins now. I will disprove the popular maxim that ends justify the means. From the abused children of the Industrial Revolution to the indigenous Taino tribe exterminated by Christopher Columbus, many instances have occurred where humans are objectified in order to achieve a goal. The main problem is these abusers genuinely believe their actions to be morally right. But the truth is, ethical murder and ethical abuse simply don't exist. Motives are irrelevant when it comes to the exploitation of human beings. During the Industrial Revolution, children worked up to 14 hours per day in the factories. Factories didn't follow safety protocol to protect their employed children. The testimony of Joseph Hebergam, a 17-year-old who lived during the time, sums up the dangerous conditions of the factories. A boy was caught in a machine and had his thigh bones broke and from his knee to his hip, the flesh was ripped up. His sister had her arms broke and her head bruised. The boy died. I do not know if the girl is dead. How can anyone think that this abuse is justifiable? Wouldn't we be fine with less cans of meat on the shelf? Is it really worth the lives of innocent children? In the late 19th century, European countries took over Africa to make more money for themselves. Countries competed in a race to capture the most land called the Scramble for Africa. They made the Africans sign treaties whose content they didn't understand. Europeans used Africans as cheap labor, demanded large taxes, and exported African goods back to Europe. Having collected everything they needed, Europe packed up and left Africa in shambles. We are obligated to be humane to others, even throughout war and conquest. 1,240,000 people were tortured from German poison gas during World War I. Mustard gas caused blindness and pneumonia in addition to burning the eyes and skin. When chemical warfare is used, the aggressor often forgets that their person is under that uniform, writhing on the ground. Fatalities are never ideal, but humane methods should be utilized when killing is necessary. Christopher Columbus may have discovered America in 1492, but he also exterminated 80% of the Haitian Taino tribe. He beat them, enslaved them, and took all the riches before mass killing them. He is given credit for being this fearless explorer who discovered America, but really he was a man of avarice. My opponent may argue that the innovation resulting from the Industrial Revolution was justified. The purpose of the Industrial Revolution was to enable everyone to live productive lives, but only the factory owners made enough money to live happily. The rest of the population survived on the bare minimum. I only touch the surface of the sea of instances where populations are trashed in the name of the common good. The means by which parties achieve their goals are so horrific that their goals are meaningless. Thank you. I now stand ready for cross-examination. Do you think it's worth sacrificing the lives of some for the greater good of others? No, I do not. I think that lives are priceless, and I think that sacrificing them for just mere convenience isn't justified. So you basically, so why, so you're saying that, um, So, you're saying that it's not worth sacrificing lives of some just because humans are unique and that each individual is unique, basically. Not because they're unique, because it's a life. You're killing someone. Imagine if you or one of your family members were killed just so that you could have electricity or exploited just for electricity. Is that worth it to you? But in the long run, it benefits a lot of people. So, it benefits... At that time, it doesn't seem like it's right, but as we go on, um, at that time during the Industrial Revolution, it didn't seem right, but as we move on, we find out that that technology has impacted our life so much, and it's worth it that a few people amongst every, a few children, amongst all the children in the world, lost their lives so that we could benefit. Well, I think that humans have survived for thousands of years without the addition of technology that we have today. And even if that weren't true, the technology that we have today, it isn't all for the better. Like, there's a loss of communication because everyone's on their devices, and it's just, it's kind of, there's a good side to it. Technology can be used for productivity, but there's also a bad side of it, that we can never, we can never get back what was lost with original communication before the Industrial Revolution. So you're saying that technology was 
So you're saying that you could live with technology? I believe the end justifies the means because the end but benefits mostly everyone. The end result of the Industrial Revolution was new and better technology that has made our life so much easier now. The end is better than what it was initially. You get that feeling of satisfaction when you accomplish a task, no matter how difficult it is. My opponent argued that children work for long hours and weren't treated fairly. Well, the children are only a small portion of the children in the world now. In the long run, it was worth it. This is why the end will always justify the means. Thank you. to pretend that overworking, helpless children during the Industrial Revolution is justified. It is callous to say that Africa was civilized and helped by the struggle for Africa. My opponent argued that technology was created during the Industrial Revolution, but humans lived happily for generations without this technology. The ends justify the means is just something that is said to do people into thinking that it is okay to kill, to torture, to exploit. For our survival, we need to realize that lives are valuable. Lives are precious. <laughs> Lives are priceless. <laughs> 